first of all, ji, like GS, I followed a standard framework for my answer because it helped me write faster, think faster, and make the whole process much simpler. Although studying at Gurukul, I'll tell you that whatever you're Whatever you're studying, try as far as possible not to focus on memorizing it without understanding it because you'll it will become much more difficult for you and you'll have a I don't think you'll be able to write as great as you could if you really understood what you were doing. About your, for your optional sociology, I would say it doesn't matter what optional you take because ultimately if, if you look at the list again, everyone for different optionals is there. The optional is not going to be the single deciding factor or for either your success or your failure. Whichever optional you have, you need to focus on making the best use of it. This will come through practice, through answer writing and through conceptual clarity, which means that if you have any questions, you should raise them, try to get them clarified at the earliest. Hi friends, I am happy to introduce you to Pratyush. Pratyush uh, he scored All India Rank 21 in the Civil Services Exam 2019. He has Sociology as his optional. And uh, I am very confident that he's done brilliantly in his Sociology paper, given his rational mode of thought and his uh, very rational preparation strategy. So also, I want to thank Pratyush. He's, uh, you know, come all the way to my residence, come office. So it took him an hour to drive down here. But he's uh, bothered to find that time. And he is going to share his sociology optional strategy with you guys. And of course, uh, once again, he's cleared this examination in his first attempt, right? He, of course, didn't have a background in sociology. So he's an engineer from IIT Kanpur. Then he's done master's MBA from IIM Ahmedabad. So, and he was actually contemplating all those other subjects like uh, civil engineering, right? And civil management. engineering and management and also philosophy. And mathematics. And mathematics, philosophy because of an interest in the subject. But he finally opted for sociology as his optional. And uh, given his approach, he uh, goes without saying he's done exceptionally well in that paper. So let us hear it from the horse's mouth. Pratyush, please. So I'll talk about my approach towards sociology. But before that, I'll just mention about a little bit about choosing an optional. I guess a lot of people have this question, you know, which optional should I take? And it's not a question you should be asking me because it's very easy for me to tell you to take zoology or botany or anything. But it's not going to help you, especially if you actually listen to that advice. The fact that I thought of a few things when I was struggling to decide which optional to take. I was I could have taken civil engineering, in engineering management, mathematics, philosophy, sociology, or economics. I ultimately went with sociology because I thought at that time that is going to be interesting since I'd taken a couple of courses on it. it all, I also had a few other factors that influenced my decision and one was that I can find the source material with little less difficulty than let's say mathematics and given the time constraints it seemed like a safer choice. Though I would recommend you to think carefully before you choose an optional and once you've chosen it don't keep questioning yourself because if you look at the toppers list you'll find that people from every optional make it there so don't blame your optional as the only reason you failed unless it's the paper you've done very badly in now for sociology specifically if you see it's very much like general studies the, the entire sociology paper except for the thinkers so i'll break it down to two parts one are the thinkers one are the and one is the remaining paper which is like I said, just in fact, the same thing you would almost write in the GS answer. So thinkers are for paper one, more than half the paper is when you read it is based on the main thinkers, Marx, Weber, Parsons. It doesn't really matter which source you refer to because ultimately these thinkers are basically, you find the same concepts in multiple places. I use notes from a previous year topper. You can refer to any and I think IGNU notes, you can refer to any source which you can understand easily. Since I had taken one or two courses on sociology, I was already familiar with some of the concepts. So I didn't need to spend time reading the basic books. But if you're completely new, you might want to try that. Thinkers are the most interesting part of the paper, I felt. And it's 
it's not very separate between thinkers and the rest of the paper because you'll be using these same thinkers and all your answers as well. The trick is to understand how to use these thinkers and an answer and what makes a sociological answer, a sociology answer more sociological than a GS answer. So what I decided was that the difference between sociology and GS is that GS is about what I think and sociology is about what sociologists think. Now I'm asked the question about religion, I never write, when I read a question about let's say uh, what is religion and what are its functions, I never think about, I read the question not as what do you think about religion and its functions, I read the question as what do sociologists think about religion and its functions. The point is that every question I would try to throw in as many names of sociological thinkers and what they said, not about what I've said. In some questions, this isn't possible because they ask slightly unusual questions like fashion and ecology, which you you probably wouldn't have thinkers ready for. I'll tell you some ways to approach these questions as well in this talk. So one one problem you might have is how do I remember so many thinkers? For this, you need to look back once you finish reading the basic thinker, the six big thinkers in paper one, Marx, Weber, Parsons and the others and realize that they're all really interrelated. You can integrate any of the thinkers and any answer and you won't have to remember new thinkers for every answer. If you ask about religion, you can. if you ask about even the functional approach towards religion, you can mention Durkheim and Parsons. And then when you want to criticize them, just talk about Marx's approach towards religion, talk about Weber's approach towards religion, talk about Robert Malinowski's study of religion. You don't, these same thinkers you've already studied, it's just that the question is now about religion rather than about a thinker, but you still use all the thinkers and you keep, you keep mixing them up based on the demand of the question. If the question is about Marxian concept of religion, then you use Weber and you use functional approach towards religion to criticize that question. So... For sociology, like GS, I followed a standard framework for my answer because it helped me write faster, think faster and make the whole process much simpler. I would break down the answer into smaller sub-dimensions. So you'd probably either have a 10 marker or a 20 marker. Depending on that, you need to decide how many sub-dimensions you'll fit your answer into and how big each sub-dimension should be. I'd usually begin with a simple introduction, which was almost always the definition the definition would be as far as possible a sociologist's definition for religion i would give durkheim's definition or if i couldn't if for some reason i couldn't recall it or the question was about marx's concept i would talk about opium of the masses instead of that if the question was about deviance then i would talk about merton's definition or maybe durkheim's definition depending on if the question specified anything otherwise whichever one i preferred after you've done the introduction or definition you come to talking about the concept Concept is where you put the thinkers. So if you are asked about deviance, you talk about Merton's conception of deviance and how it, the, how different people react differently because of the goals and the means and the discrepancies between these. This is where you throw in the thinkers. As far as possible, don't say talk about anything without mentioning who said it. What I'd simply write the name of the thinker, put a dash and indicate that this is what he said. If, if it's a generic question, if it's a specific question, you'll probably talk about that one thinker. So if they ask about Marx or Merton, you'll talk about Marx and Merton. But if it's generally on religion, then I try to put in at least three or four thinkers, different views of religion. So then it depends if, if you have a, it depends again on the, the number of marks your question is for and how much time and space you have. If you're asked to discuss something, you probably wouldn't criticize it much. If at, if at all you just write one or two short criticisms if you don't have much content. If you're asked to analyze something, analyze means criticism in the sense both positive criticism and negative criticism. So it would be an introduction with a definition, explain the concept, then write about a positive feature of the concept. So for religion you can write how functionalism explains how we have pluralistic societies like India living peacefully together. And you focus on how religion can have benefits for the individual, like Robert Malinowski's study shows. Then you'd go to the negative criticism, which is basically why is this concept flawed? If it's about again, if it's about functional, the function of religion, you talk to criticize this negatively. You talk about Marx's view of religion that it's opium of the masses and it protects the interests of the ruling class. 
and one more thing that before you talk about the criticism you look at what the question wants if it's let's say a question asking you to discuss something you could you probably want to put an example instead of a criticism so for example it's better it's as far as possible it's better to relate it to current affairs if it asks if you want an example of the negative features of religion it's very simple to look at islamic radicalism in the middle east if you want example of the positive feature of religion you can again pick so many examples of let's let's say the sick langars distributing food to the jobless during covid this is where current affairs comes very handy everything you read in the news is actually an example in sociology like greta thunberg is an example of women empowerment youth empowerment ecological uh, eco- ecological issues making their way in the collective conscience of society so try to relate the news headlines to sociology and you find that you don't need to specifically remember too many examples and so you've got an introduction you've got you've explained the concept you can put an example if it's relevant then you can criticize it if you ask to analyze it and then you can end it with a simple one or two line just a summary nothing fancy because you don't have too much time to think of a very polished ending you can i and based on this you split your answer into smaller smaller framework you won't have to remember too many points for each because you'll hardly have 30 40 30 or 40 maximum 50 words in any single dimension this means that remembering these are is very easy because i found that three or five points anyone can remember but remembering 15 points becomes a big pain so this is how thinkers will help you answer most of the questions when you but some questions are slightly unusual in the sense that they ask about topics which you won't find anywhere else and most thinkers don't mention these things i think there was one question related to terrorism or ecology in the paper then one year there was a question on fashion here you need to innovate either you use examples and examples of ecology are abundant anywhere you'll find the small island developing states pressing their case in the un because they are the most affected how poor and vulnerable are the most affected and even here it's very simple to use marxist and functionalist approach for any issue terrorism for marx for the marxist approach is simply the the oppressed class raising its voice against the ruling class for functionalism you can link it to deviance and talk about how it's people who are rebelling against the collective conscience and trying to introduce new values and that it's function this even an issue like terrorism might in a sense be inevitable or functional for society so marxism and functionalism essentially are two opposite th- thought processes and they f- can fit in almost anywhere use that to your advantage when you have questions which are slightly unusual you might not know the thinker but you can still mention marxist view functionalist view and that's still sociological in a sense otherwise put put in examples wherever possible examples mostly from current affairs if not then then you still have to try to innovate because it's in a sense you can't really leave a question and expect to get a good score every question counts and the difference at i would say attempting all the questions writing average answers is better than attempting less number of questions writing great answers so for this this will come only with practice with reading the newspaper with an eye to link it to sociology and by thinking about all the other sociologists you've read about and trying to fit their views wherever they make sense for sociology specifically don't you will also notice that it's very much like gs so especially paper 2 that a lot of effort isn't needed in knowing the the points you want to write because there are things which most of us already know just make sure that you as far as possible you don't mention the point without mentioning a thinker these thinkers are relatively lesser known sociologists you'll find them in the test series you do i found some of them over there and i noted them down these are thinkers most people probably have not even heard of just put even you'll even know the points already what they're saying just make sure you never you still mention their name even if you're writing something as simple as causes of migration and push factors and pull factors of migration you'll find there's always some sociologists who said that before just put in that name and since it's these thinkers are also less known this is your advantage it doesn't matter whether you write feminist thinker a or b has said a point i didn't remember which who said what exactly 
I just knew this person is a feminist thinker. He, he or she is likely to have said this, so I would put in that. I don't think anyone is going to really look into and analyze whether this person actually said this thing. This is some way you can innovate. And if you follow these steps, I think you'll find that your sociology paper becomes much simpler and it won't take a lot of time for you. Thank you, Pratyush. Thanks a lot. Those were very, uh, should I say, practical tips uh, in uh, how to approach the sociology paper. And uh, in fact, I'm sure you'll be a great asset to the Indian bureaucracy and to the society as a whole. Right?